Hey friends, welcome to another episode of Live Boldly with Sarah. Today, we're going to be talking about guilt and shame, two sister emotions that I have experienced plenty of. I want to dive into this because I did a post on LinkedIn, Instagram, and I believe in my Facebook page as well, and it really drew up a lot of conversation. And so I decided we're going to take this to the podcast. Now, next week, we are going to have on Frankie Russo. I want to also encourage you to go listen to that podcast episode, Take Your Journal and Take Notes, because his episode is all about loving your weird loving that version of you from your younger self and how we can actually use our weird quote weird right and we're we dive really into this it's so cool it's such a great conversation and how we can use that in both our personal and professional lives in relationships most importantly with that relationship with self so ultimately it comes back to self love worthiness and uh being honest with who you are now guilt and shame why this is important um because So much around life I have found in this work, the 10 years that I've been diving into this, really diving into this, I've been diving into this though since I was 17, so much of what we struggle with in life is our own worthiness, our own love for self. And along the way, we may feel this intense guilt about uh, our actions or about how we live our life or how we're even living our life at this moment. Maybe you right now listening to this aren't loving your life that much. And you might feel guilty about that. You might feel guilty that you um, aren't having the relationships that you want, or you might feel guilty that you didn't go after that dream or that goal quote yet, please. Cause there's always time. You might feel guilty about the way that your family fell apart or the way that, or the pe- person you might feel guilty about the person that you married You might feel guilty about how you've treated your family members or your friends or how you stepped into a career or out of a career. Guilt is something that for so many of us uh, is even placed on us by other people. You know, um, many people in my life have handed their story to me and I felt guilty that I've carried it or that I didn't get out soon enough or that I didn't speak up when I should have or could have, right? And guilt is something that for many of us, it's an external, like it, it's, it's a, um, we feel this intense guilt about something and ultimately what it is there to teach us is responsibility, accountability, and how to change the patterns of not only our life at this moment, right. But how that also impacts both our past and also our future. So guilt is it's a hard emotion to hold on to, I'm telling you. And so working through that guilt and ultimately changing the way that we are living is the best tool that it's taking those bold moves, those bold actions moving forward, right? And choosing differently in the present moment. Shame, on the other hand, shame is something that we feel when we have stepped on our own morals, our own values, uh, It's something that a shame spiral can be extremely hard to come out of. Shame is something that we feel when we perhaps are not proud of, right? Or we um, aren't, uh, we feel really bad about the way that we have lived our life or maybe the way that we are choosing to live our life. Shame is something that is covered up a lot of time by addictions, as we all know. One of the best ways to get out of our shame cycle is to talk, is to communicate, to share our story, to put ourselves in a place of openness, vulnerability, authenticity. It's being very, very clear and honest with yourself and how you are living your life and how you want to live it differently. Ultimately though, how we choose to live it differently. In my own life, I have felt, and I, when I was on this podcast episode with Frankie Russo, um, today when I was interviewing him for next week's episode, we were talking about shame and how uh, in my own life, I've, I've had to walk through a lot of shame. I have felt a lot of shame for the things that have happened to me, uh, for how I didn't ultimately take action on the red flags that I saw in the relationships that I had, not only within my marriage, but also within my dating life. 
not there anymore, thank goodness, now in complete healthy attachment and loving where I'm at, those patterns kept creeping up because I needed to keep learning those patterns and I needed, I hadn't learned the lesson yet. Right. And that's why they keep creeping up. Ultimately though, I felt a lot of shame around that. It was like, Sarah, how the heck can you be in this place again? How can you not have learned yet? And ultimately I'm not the only one in those shoes, right? Like a lot of us walk this journey and we face the same problems over and over and over again. We have to get up every single morning and make that choice to live differently than we did the day before, right? And so there's this journey of not allowing yourself to get to that place because, or even if you do get to that place, it's about choosing differently and stepping out of that place to live how we want in this lifetime. Shame is something though that, yeah, it sucks. It it will, it will pull you down into that rabbit hole and sink you deep. And ultimately what we need to do is to forgive ourselves time and time again, every day that we wake up, forgive ourselves for our actions that we have made, forgive ourselves for not listening to those red flags, for not listening to ourselves to choose differently, right? Because that's ultimately what self-forgiveness is. It's about learning from our lessons and choosing differently the next time so that we can step into a future uh, in freedom, right? And who we want to be. That said, you will screw up along the way. (laughs) I hate to break it to you because you're human. You will ultimately have those missteps, right? Where we find ourselves back in the guilt and shame again, where it's we beat ourselves up again and we say, well, how the heck did I not see this? This happened to me actually this last weekend. Here's a story for you. So my son, um, he fractured his arm and playing basketball and I took him to get you know a cast on and he came to me at the end of last week and he said, hey mom, can I get my cast wet? And he asked me this question while I was in the middle of work or doing something. And I list kind of half listened to him, but I didn't fully listen to him. And I was like, yeah, go ahead. Like, take a shower. You're fine. Well, he's like, are you sure? Can I get my cast wet? And I said, yeah, of course you can get your cast wet. I've gotten my cast wet. Well, what I hadn't thought about because I wasn't fully 100% present because I was also doing work at the time too was wait a second, Sarah, you had a waterproof cast. Do you really know if he's got a waterproof cast? I made this assumption when on my behalf too, the doctor didn't say not to get it wet. So I went off of what I had, the story that I had known in my past, which was, of course you can get your cast wet, right? And so here I am and I send him into the shower, he gets his cast wet. And he. this is over the course of a few days where he's working out and showering. And then he sends me this text message on Sunday and he's like, bro, mom, I wasn't supposed to get my cast wet. And it was like, in that moment, a light bulb went on for many things. First of all, it was this realization of, oh my gosh, he might not have a waterproof cast. I never even thought about that. I went off of the story of my past, right? Which was, of course, you can get it wet because I've only had waterproof casts. And then of course I felt guilt and shame. I went straight into that space of how could you be so dumb not to have actually taken a step back and questioned is his cast waterproof? Like I went straight in. You can be, don't even attempt to beat me up because I can beat myself up really, really well. And then I went into the shame spiral of all the times in my past that, you know, I stepped on my own values of stopping and listening and my, you know, my mom space of like, how could you have screwed this up as a mom? And, you know, my own space of like, Sarah, you know, put your children first, set the work aside while he's asking you that question. There's so many things that I spiraled into at that moment, because that's what we tend to do sometimes. And then I sat and I went, okay, hold on, take a breath, pause, and just remember that this is not the end of the world. Just remember that you are human. Have some fierce self-compassion, give yourself some grace. You're not going to be the perfect mom all the time. You're not going to be the perfect dad. You're not going to be the perfect partner, the perfect child, the perfect friend. You're just not the perfect colleague. You're just not. And you make mistakes too. And so in that moment, I took that. It was like this flip, right? Where yes, I went into guilt and shame. Yes, I beat myself up as a mom. How could you be so stupid to not have just taken a pause and listened to him back then 
and actually asked yourself, geez, can you go take a shower with your cast on? Right? There's the breath. There's the grounding. There's the reminder that you are human. So when you're going into that guilt and shame, when you're going into that space, when you are falling down that rabbit hole, take your own arm and reach yourself out and give yourself some fierce self-compassion and some self-forgiveness. Now, in my own self-forgiveness work, it doesn't take much to pull me out of the space now because I've gone down this journey for so long and I've taught myself how in that pause moment to just put your head up, look around. I happen to be standing, believe it or not, on a on a little, not a mountain necessarily, but I was out on a hill. I was on a hike when I got that text and I stopped and I looked up into the clouds and I looked around at the view and I allowed myself to be grounded, right? Took a breath, realized, okay, wait, this is only a moment in time. Next week, this isn't even going to matter because we're going to end up getting a new cast on him. And who knows if this is going to play out better because of it, right? Which actually ended up playing out better because of it. We did get a new cast and it was a nicer cast and his arm had gone down and swelling. And so it was totally fine. It ended up being just fine. My point being though, is that all those patterns in our past, right? This is a moment to stop them. And this is a moment to do differently than you had before. So take a pause, respond, don't react. And remember, you know what? Like it is just a moment in time and it, and it will get better because we're going to choose better together. We're going to make those bold moves and we're going to choose better together. And you know why I share stories like this? Because when I share stories like this, it also relinquishes my shame to out there, right? I don't hold on to it because, you know, when we share a story, we also create connection with other people. And we have this realization that we are all human. I mean, listen, when I walked into the doctor's office that day and I looked at the doctor and the PA and I said, I'm so sorry. Like I... I should perhaps know better. I get it. And I, in that moment, when he asked me, I went back to what I knew, which was the cast that you put me on in the past was a waterproof cast. And he's like, yeah, but with this, with what we're doing with him, we can't. And it's all, it's all good, Sarah. Don't worry about it. It's all good. Like we were all laughing about it. And so owning up to that, right. And saying, look, I'm sorry. Like I'm human. It also taught my son in that moment that, he's human too. Like he's going to make mistakes down the line and he's going to have to own up to them. And when he goes down that spiral of guilt and shame, the truth will always set you free. Your honesty with self will always set you free. Your ability to share your story and to have others listen to it and to connect in that way will not only then set you free, but it sets them free too, to do the same. So guilt and shame, man, they can suck. I'm telling you, those sister emotions, they can spiral you. Just remember, though, that you don't have to go down with the ship because you are the captain of your own boat. So there you go. Um, next week, when we dive into Love Your Weird with uh, Frankie Russo, you may want to, after that, come back and listen to this episode again, because it might help you a little bit to work through those emotions right? And to be able to remind yourself that you are human too. Um, you know, Frankie and I talk a little bit about how our weird in life, like loving that weirdness of who we are, has allowed us to also not stay in the guilt and the shame uh, within our own life and how it's given us this space to rise into who we are today. Um, because our stories and the traumas and the things that we live through, they can really drag us down. We can feel a lot of heavy with them. We can feel a lot, of, a lot of guilt. We can feel a lot of shame around that story. And ultimately, when we can speak truth into it and be honest with ourselves, that is a really important part of the conversation that he and I have, which is about being honest with ourselves. And you got to listen to what he has to say because it is good. It is really good. And when we can be honest with ourselves, when we can be honest with our journey and with others around us, it really does set us free to become that person that we were intended all along. 
I turned 50, you know, this year, like I don't tell everybody that enough. Uh, I did. And he is, I don't, you can ask him how old he is, but he's a cool dude. A um, little bit younger than me. But the thing, the thing that I will say is that I am now coming up on 10 years out of my trauma. So everything happened to me in 2013 when my life imploded and I'm coming up on 10 years now this Thanksgiving. And I'm telling you, I look back on myself from 10 years ago and I don't recognize this woman who I once was. And I'm so freaking proud of every version of me that has gotten me to where I am right now in this moment. And I want the exact same thing for all of you. And I know in my story that for me to continue this rise and to share this journey with you, for you to all be able to do the same as you were listening to this lessons, these lessons that I've had to walk through, it takes a lot on my end to really forge this journey, which I say is like blazing a trail that I've, I don't know this trail, like I'm blazing my own along the way. And it's a trail that I'm blazing Yes, for me, but also for everybody that's also on this journey, this in this community, when we're all in this together. And I'm going through a rebrand and that brand right now. And um, I am super stoked about it. I'm really excited about it. And one of the things that I am really stepping more into is the journey of making those bold moves, right? And it's not simply a journey of healing from your past. It's about making those bold moves in the present moment while you are also continuously learning from what you have walked through so that in this journey right now where you're at, when you're making those bold moves, you're belonging more to yourself in the present. You are creating those connections, that community, that resilience. You are deepening that understanding and that personal relationship with self so that you can ultimately create this life that you are choosing in your present and future. It is a really, really cool up brand that I'm stepping into that you're going to see along the way over the next uh, four, five, six months. Um, that's what my speaking engagement is on. If you know anybody that is within the uh, both corporate setting, uh, within uh, women's organizations, any kind of organizations, I would love nothing more than to bring this message to everyone there. And making bold moves is one of the things that will uh, ultimately change the way we do business and personal lives. Hands down, I fully believe in this, in leadership, in all of the ways, the way, the way that we choose to actually be is the way that we choose to also become, right? That's how we become uh, this version of self. And so please, if there's anybody out there that is looking for a speaker on that, uh, as we are moving into this up brand, this rebrand, I call it an up brand. I don't call it a rebrand. I literally, it's like elevating into this next space, right? Without those bold moves along the way <laughs> in all of the areas of our life, right? Without diving into those spaces and making different choices, um, we stay, we stay in a space that we're in right now. And I am just not okay with mediocre. And I don't think that nobody, I don't think anybody in this world, I don't think anybody in this world should be okay with mediocre. I think it's one of those things that we always can step into that rise if we choose. So that's what we're doing here. You're going to notice this along the way. It's going to be really fun to watch. It's going to be fun to witness. And I am so excited about it. Uh, including our retreats. If you are looking to make a bold move on the retreat coming up in January, we have a couple of spots left and I welcome you. Those bold moves in that canyon will change the way that you not only live on a, on uh, today, but you're going to live in the future. It is a super, super fun, exciting space to be in. So a couple of spots left and we welcome you. I've got quite a few people looking at them. So message me right away and let's get you in. There you go. That's what I have on guilt, on shame, on loving your weird, which is next week and on making those bold moves along the way. Have an absolute beautiful day, my friends. And please push this episode into the laps of others. Be a ripple of change for everyone in this world because that is why we are here. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I love you.